um, Lenko is particularly good for 289 because I can pedal the car, get on it, and back off it again. Um, I personally really enjoy the Lenko as well because we can use it for circuit race track because we take this car to power cruise. So it's just a, a, a really good, fairly robust setup. Heavy, but gets the job done. Essentially, you're not running the pods with the Lenko at all. If you roll over on your back, you still kept the headers in it. Because it's cool. <laughs> there's nothing like lightning rod shifters. No, we can't. Um, we've still got to have it a function of the driver. And there's a question as to where the buttons are um, or not. But the, um, the the levers are good because I can go up and down gears. Where with the air shifter, not quite as easy. So we're happy with this. The cars run seven 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 seven. So all the sevens, um, and it's gone 183 mile an hour. Um, I find the box is fine because I'm just pulling the levers, starting at the outside and working my way across the levers. Um, and when I run out of levers, I know it's time to start looking for the parachute. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is old school. This box is out of a 1998 um, Pro Stock truck, and it's served me well now for 13, 14 years, so we'll stick with it. It's a CS3. It's a bit of a hybrid CS3. Um, so it's a special low drag box that was built for the, the Pro Stock truck. Uh, I'm an accountant, so I know all about that. Um, my crew know the technical aspects, and my crew chief can tell you everything about it. Me, myself, I just know that when um, when I grab gears, there's the next one, and away we go. Yeah, so how do you actually run it, uh, Daniel? So how do you engage first gear? Can you just show me that first? Because okay. the Lincos have five. It's a five-speed forward and five-speed reverse. That's exactly right. So, so this, is, this is forward and reverse, and also first gear. So when I push that back, I'm in first gear going that way. Second Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, and fifth gear. And the interesting thing about Alenco, if I want to, I can pull any the levers in any order. So once we wanted to see what would happen if we did a different ratio, and because they're a reduction drive, we just took this lever off, pulled second, pulled the third gear lever, which used that ratio because it's a reduction ratio. Use that ratio just to see if a ratio change would help. Um, did so we put the second gear lever and away we went. So the bell housing housing this one is a um, steel can, um, and then it's wrapped in a ballistic blanket. Yep, it's a twin plate direct clutch. Um, direct have served me really well as um, with the nationals we put a little bit too much in it and we found the limit of the clamping pressure of the clutch. Um, so this is our first time with a uh, with a higher cam clamping pressure clutch. So it might take a couple of passes to get the hang of what it wants. Because with the Lenko we've got a little bit of slip through the uh, we deliberately set a bit of slip through the box and the clutch and we'll just have to get those set up right. Direct Clutch have sent us a flywheel and clutch combo. Um, my crew chief and Direct Clutch have worked out what they think is optimal for the car. Um, I'm just the guy behind the wheel that pulls the levers. The car's on a ladder bar. The gearbox box itself is held in on the front by a... Um, there's a plate that, that holds the front of the gearbox in. And I think there's a plate on the back of it too. So I try not to get under... Yeah, so it's got, it's got... We have sliders on it, and one of the reasons for that, um, if we want to do anything with the clutch, we can slide the gearbox back, but you can't realistically do that between rounds unless you say at a Winter Nationals. An event like this, where you're backing up every hour and a half, um, we, we can't get to the clutch that quickly. Pimp's not running a slider clutch, it's just a, um, a, a McLeod's type setup. So I have a couple of um, Pack 20 bs both of them are running on Haltech with Haltech dashes. Um, we, um, we love the Haltechs, it's been more than once that the, um, that the safety features in the Haltech have saved me an engine. What about the, it's running CDI obviously? Yep. Um, we've got um, MW ignition system up underneath it. We've got two of them. So we've got one for leading, one for trailing. We use that to set um, two-step rev limit and so on and so forth. Okay, and I see a gas tank in there as well. It's running. That's for your... No, no, that's for my um, yeah, boost controller. So no, this car... Well, oh, God. It also be frightening in this car. We've got too much power as it is. So. Uh, it depends who you talk to. I've never seen a dyno share. Well, I've seen a dyno once at about 980. Um, having said that, the mile an hour we run with the weight of the car, you can't do it with less than about 1,300 of the wheels. So if you work out the car and me weighing in the better part of 2,600 pounds and going 183 mile an hour and you use the slide rule cow, there's plenty there. Um, we're running a lot less boost than we can. It's just if I try to put too much in, it stands up on the tyres through top gear. And, uh, today we will, if we decide to get after it, 33, 34, it's capable of running a lot more than that. But my first pass will be sub 30, just to, to shake the car down. Um, 
probably the first parts will be mid 20, 25 to 27 pound a boost. Um, not sure the ratio we're running at the moment. Um, I think it's 4.11s. We were 4.56s, but I think we've gone 4.11s. Um, the diff is a 9 inch, 35 spine. Um, I've had no issues with it. It's um, it's pretty strong. But then again, it's uh, a lot of the components in this are built to handle two, two and a half thousand horsepower, and I know we're not making that much. Um, Aaron helps me out with the RX2, um, and Rocky and Aaron collaborate. So whenever there's any changes to be made, they discuss it between the two of them and they agree the tune. So um, my car is still a pack car, still looked after by Pack and ASG, and the guys work in in, in such harmony. So Pack built it in 2006. Um, what we've changed since 2006, uh, it went from a mole port, so the mole port engine is in my RX-7. This is now a small bridge port, it's got one of the first 10 billet plates ever made, so it's got one of the old turbo smart ones. Yes. Um, the turbocharger's been changed, the ignition, um, the ignition and injection's been changed. Aside from that, the car is very, very similar to what it was in 2006. There's been no massive enhancements or things like that. Um, PAC still helped me out with my engine program. Um, and generally, uh, barring uh, operator error, we get one to two seasons out of an engine without having to freshen it. When are we going to see a billet by pack in there? Well, we've got a billet centre plate. We'll put a billet by pack pack in it when we need it. But at the moment, um, it's not broken and it's uh, it's fine. So I won't upgrade it until I need to. You know, power isn't an issue with this car. The billet by pack gives greater reliability. Um, we acknowledge that. But at the moment, it's it's been plenty reliable. I think I've cracked, without a word of a lie, I think I've cracked one plate in 13 years with pack. So. No, it's not too bad. Not, not really. The chassis is probably at the level that the limit of development. When you start reaching a point where you don't want to go any faster in a 1970 RX2, um, we're running the car at Jamboree, but we're more focused on, or we'll be more focused on running the Group 2 type thing, so Super Compact. And for Super Compact, when we're running on an index, it's just trying to get the car more reliable. Um, we think we can get a bit better performance out of it. We think maybe we, um, over time, we might get it down to a 7.5, and we've probably got the power to go close to 190 on the 28 by 9 tyre, but kind of that, that will be enough when you're strapping yourself into it and you, you understand what can go wrong with them. So, still plenty fast. What time do you think you'll get today? Uh, I haven't done many meetings for a long time, so the aim is to get from one end to the other without breaking anything. Um, today we want to qualify um, competitively in the field and then tomorrow we'll probably take a little bit of um, dollar in a little bit slower and try to run a few people down and see if we can't um, win ourselves another Jamboree trophy to go with the one we've already got. So one thing I can share with you is um, there's going to be plenty of big burnouts today. So with the burnout, people ask me how much boost you're running the burnout. Um, 4.5 to 5.5 pound is what it makes in the burnout. Um, and we're turning about 8,000 RPM. And when the burnout stops, that's because I can see Rocky somewhere in my rear vision mirror indicating I should not drive to the other end of the track, smoking the tyres. is perfectly capable of doing it. So looking forward to that too. <laughs>